Well, hello there. Let's talk about tin note today. A tin note for pipe tobacco is the smell that you get when you open up the tin. So let's open up a few for the first time and a couple that I've already opened to give you some initial impressions. And then I'm going to give you some words down below to help you describe what you're smelling. I'm also going to make a couple recommendations for pipes and some of the tobaccos and where to get them. So let's start with Dunhill Elizabethan Mixture. This is a gift from Mr. Rizzo. I think he is Philly Pipe Smoker or Philly Piper or something like that. No, I think there's Philly Pipe Smoker and then there's Philly... Let me just double check here. I could be wrong and I often am. And let's see here. There is Philly Pipe Smoker, Mr. Walsh, who I think has one of the best channels that's out there. I do think that there is a Philly Piper, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Mr. Rizzo is Philly Piper. Well, I can't seem to find it right now, but <laughs> if you want, look for Philly Pipe Smoker. And if I find Mr. Rizzo's channel, I will certainly uh, put a link down below. But Philly Pipe Smoker, boy, I really like him, Mr. Walsh. Good guy, hasn't been on in a while, but certainly valuable information, a no-nonsense man that I probably will share some distilled spirits with one of these days and maybe have a pipe, being that we live in the same area. All right, let's take a look at Dunhill Elise Elizabethan Mixture. And like I said, all right, made in Denmark. Let's take a look. Let me just pop this tin. There's the whoosh. Oh, okay, and this is dark Virginia tobacco with Louis Louisiana Perique. Oh, nice. Nice, 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 nice. Typical Dunhill packaging. I probably get more tobacco gifts than any human being that I know. Honestly, my, if there was a pipe tobacco apocalypse, I would be set for many, many years. Oh, look at, isn't that beautiful? Look at that color. Isn't that pretty? As they say, the bright Virginias. All right, it's packed down. Let me just break it up a little bit. Loosen it up. I smell Virginia. The tiniest, tiniest bit of Perique, which is a spicier, more pungent, but not mushroomy, rotten kind of thing. Which in pipe vernacular, mushroomy and rotten is actually a good thing. I just, smelling this, honestly, now this, keep in mind, that room note, what you smell when you're smoking the pipe is different than tin note. Some people, like newbies, will smell this and think that it's going to smell and taste like this when they fire it up. Nothing could be further from the truth. But one of the beauty, beautiful things about this particular hobby is that you get so many different notes. Tin note, room note, and then of course if you have a beard, 
and you're the kind of person that doesn't blow the smoke really far away from your face. I don't. Like in that uh, poem, The Night Before Christmas, it talks about Santa having a wreath of smoke around his head. I kind of like that wreath of smoke, which does this. It actually imparts a smell to your beard for those who have facial hair. And I called that, I might have been the first one that coined this phrase, the beard note. Tin note, room note, beard note. And I, I would notice that when I would have a pipe at the end of the day, lay down to go to sleep, brush my teeth, rinse my mouth out with water, have a little bite or something, you know. Uh, lay down. When my head hits the pillow, I'd be like, smelling. And I don't fire up a pipe in the house, so obviously there's no room note in my house. I usually do it outside or in the Van Gogh room. And what I was smelling was the smell that was imparted to my beard. And it was different than room and tin. And I thought that was really interesting. And there are certain pipe tobaccos that leave different beard notes. Completely different. Let's get back to tin note. First thing I think, now I live four miles outside of Philadelphia. And it's not uncommon for me to make trips to Upper Bucks County or Lancaster County going west. Bucks County going north, Lancaster and Chester County going west from where I am. And you start seeing a lot of farms, working farms. And when you get out to Lancaster County, which is Amish country and a lot of farmland, you smell the grass. You smell the hay. You smell the the huge fields of green stuff that's not yet cut. And, on the, and that has a certain smell. And then on the days that they're cutting the hay or cutting the grass or cutting the crops or whatever, there is a smell in the air. This is what I'm smelling right now, is that smell in the air, the fresh cut grass. And it's a little bit sweeter than that. A tiny bit sweeter. Dunhill Elizabethan mixture. Let me just pop this little thing back on. This was not open. This was a virgin opening. As I said, a gift from Mr. Rizzo. Let's see what else do I have. All right, this is from Lox Hair Wax Company. Uh, Dave sent me two tins of tobacco. One is Hyde Park. This is a, uh, a perfumed blend. It says a traditional English blend of bright and dark fired Virginias, Indian and burly tobacco. Some, I've heard some people call this a Lakeland blend. Let me pop this dog open. There we go. This is a Peterson tobacco. Let's take that little disc off. Oh, look at that. It's, it's a, um, a broken flake. Isn't that pretty? You can almost see some whole flakes in there, but not quite. Oh gosh, look at that. How weird is it, man, when you get excited about stuff like this? All right, look at that. So it's kind of like broken. Can you see that? That's interesting. Now, that th this is a, I don't want to say a perfumed blend, but I know from smoking this that it has a different vibe when you're smoke completely different. You get hit with this perfumey kind of thing, which is so different. And it's something that I like to fire up a couple times a year. This is not a daily smoker. If you are a daily smoker of Hyde Park, comment down below. I'd like to see. But the initial thought. 
It's not nearly as grassy as the Elizabethan. The dark fired, slightly, slight, it, it's almost got a well done, you know like when you cook something that's a little more well done, it's got just a darker, not a charred or smoky thing going on, but it is different. But I'm not getting a major, major tin note out of this. It doesn't mean that it's any less attractive. I'm just not getting a major tin note. I think the beauty in Hyde Park is after you fire it up. It's certainly not the tin note. This is only the second tin that I've had of this. Interesting, huh? All right. What else? All right, this came from uh, Dave at Lox Hair Wax Company. Let's pop this. This is probably my favorite Balkan blend. It's called Bill Bailey's Balkan Blend. I haven't opened this up before. I actually got some uh, from my brick and mortar tobacconist probably three years ago. They ordered it by mistake and I bought it up. And they didn't know how to label it. And so I said, I'll take it all. And I did. And it was incredible. And I think I just have a little tiny bit left. So this says, first choice tobaccos matured and skillfully blended for a cool and gentle smoke. Made by Dan Tobacco. So let's... This doesn't have the little... You know, like the Dunhills have the uh, this little thing like where you put a knife or a quarter or something like that in there. This doesn't have that, so I'm just gonna break the seal with this knife just to kinda, and I don't really care about the edge in this knife. I'm not that concerned. Boom. Oh, already, already I'm smelling it. It's got the disc in there. Oh my gosh, this is, mm. as far as uh, Balkan blends, I'll be honest with you, this is my favorite of all time. Talk about a beard note too, but let's talk about tin note here. It's, it's just, it's one of the most exquisite tobaccos I've ever had. Not to be rushed. Dry it out for an hour, which means take it out and let it sit. Now, look, it's packed in here pretty nicely. Let's look at the puck itself. I call it a puck. When you kind of go in. See that? So it's not pressed as tightly as the other one. Oh, gosh. Only pipe tobacco people can get excited about this. A longer shag cut. Mm. I felt this the same way when I first smelled Frog Morton on the town, but this has this beat has uh, on the town beaten, not even by by a whole body, not just a nose. It is just this is such an exquisite blend, and you ne and you definitely want to pair this. I could just, you know what, I can just forget all the other tobaccos I have and just smell this right now. I mean, it's, it's so exquisite. I still have things to do today, so I'm not going to be firing up right now. I only, for me, I only fire up at the end of the day. It's my day off from the salon. For those who don't know, I work in a salon. Cut hair. Bill Bailey's Balkan Blend. Google that. This is a gift from Mr. Rizzo. This is a Balkan Sobrani. Original smoking mixture made in the British Isles. And it's got that little notch in there to pop it open. Ah. I've, I've never had this before, so this is a... This is a first time for me to, to open up this particular type and smell it. Oh, wow, right away, sweetness, right, just jumping right out at me. Not a, there's no, uh, um, 
there's no dry, musty thing going on. This is, I'm getting fresh, fresh, fresh. Look at that, a really thin cut, super thin cut. I don't even know what you would call a thin cut. Compared to, let me just take out that Balkan blend real quick and show you the difference between the cuts. Balkan blend, long shag, thicker pieces. This one here, right here, the Balkan Sobrani, thin, very thin strips. I see black, I see yellow, I see dark brown. I probably, re, pipe tobacco blends remind me of hair. I always tell people, no one has brown hair, nobody has, you know, you've heard the phrase, 50 shades of gray, okay? No one has just one, nobody is monochrome, except, except Asian, most Asian people and most Indian people, okay? Outside of that, most people have about five different shades. For instance, you might say, I have gray hair. I have a white beard and gray hair or silver. Sometimes, depending on how the light hits it, uh, it just there's different color notes, different dimension. In the same way, I love the colors of pipe tobacco. I see brown. I see almost a yellow beige. I see dark brown. I see some black flake in there. Let's just grab some of this here and just get a whiff. I've always felt this was a little bit harder to load into the pipe to pack. See, those, some of those strips are, I mean, some of those strips are two inches long. But let's just get a whiff here. Mmm. Oh, exquisite. I mean, just absolutely exquisite. Absolutely exquisite. Mmm. Grassy. A little, a little smoky. A little pungent thing going on. And I'm sure that the, and it is a little moist, so your best to take it out, take out what you would need for a pipe and just let it sit for an hour to dry out a little bit. A drier smoke is a pre more preferable smoke. It'll be cooler. It'll gunk up your pipe less, less residue, and it'll be easier to light and to stay lit. Never had this. I probably should do a video on this all by itself. Balkan Sobrani. Imported by Arango Cigar Company, Northbrook, Illinois. No date on it. Sometimes there are dates on tobacco. There's codes. You know, they put so many late, like I know in uh, other countries, they put like smoking kills, you know, like on the label. I guess law tells, you know, they have these laws there. And, uh, I jokingly used to call call them, oh, I got a tin of smoking kills today, or a tin of birth defects, <laughs> or reproductive harm. Count the cost and everything, absolutely everything. Let's take another look at, uh, this is Esoterica, and I'm gonna show you something else. Esoterica, uh, a gift from Mr. Rizzo. This is Pembroke. And I've, I've gotten um, some Stonehaven from 1972 Woodsman, one of my favorite channels. You want, I want to give him a shout out as well. You'll check him out. I'll put his link down below. All right, so this is a pretty exquisite blend. I already broke this open. This one has a, um, it's Choice English and Cognac. Very interesting, right? I never had Esoterica before. See that? Right away, cognac, right away, right away. I get the, oh, now mixed with a little bit of the English, mild English, not strong. See, 
and there's a sweetness that's popping out of it that mixes with the sweetness of the that mixes with the sweetness of the Virginias that are in there. Now I'm seeing a little bit of broken flake in there as well. That's nice. Feels like grass to me. Mmm. Let it dry. Exquisite. It's not as exquisite as Bill Bailey's Balkan blend. But since these are uh, micro batch and limited editions, much they're, they're more in demand because they're harder to get the esoterica tobaccos. I like this. Not as smoky as the, the Bill Bailey Balkan blend, but I do like the, the cognac topping that's in there. What else do I have? All right, I have some gifts from, like I said, I have more gifts than you can imagine. Pe when people come get their hair cut or beard trimmed, I've even had ladies that I'll do a blowout and they will bring me a tin of tobacco. That's pretty interesting. This was a gift from uh, uh, 1972 Woodsman. Uh, 2010 McFerrin Plum Cake. And the first time I ever tried it, I said, where have, why have I not, why have I not tried this before? Ah, just magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. From 2010, so this is eight years old. And it smokes beautifully. It smokes so beautiful. It's exquisite. It's a take your time with it kind of thing. All of these ones here, you can enjoy them by themselves or you can pair them. I tend to pair things with whiskey as opposed to... Um, every now and then I'll, I'll have a sipping rum but I will usually have my rum when I have a cigar. And when I say uh, have my rum or whiskey, I'm, I'm talking about that much in a shot glass. That, not a lot. I'm not drinking for effect. I'm not drinking to get myself in the mood or to unwind. I drink because I like the pairing of the flavors. 2013 Capstan Blue Ready Rubbed. There's, and you could tell that's from 1972 Woodsman. Good guy. Let me just get a whiff of this again. You can tell I've already dove into this bag. Just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Virginia. I, I highly recommend the Capstan Blue. Highly recommend it. And then this is a, a 2009 Stonehaven. Again, uh, there's enough in there for one bowl. He sent me several flakes which look more like beef jerky. I mean, they're, they're, they're big. They're not like a regular flake tobacco. And this, I would call this a complex smoke. It's complex. I get chocolate and molasses out of this. I don't get any fresh cut hay, no grass, no nothing like that. I just get hardcore chocolate, molasses, dark chocolate, cocoa, but then it smokes kind of smoky as well, exquisite. I know why it's rare. I know why people pay a lot for it. If you look at the prices of the Esoterica tobaccos, they're very expensive. I mean, Mr. Rizzo got this for me, okay? I mean, seriously, the price on this, $24. Thank you, Mike Rizzo. Seriously, this is, it's an incredible, incredible tobacco. What else do we have? Uh, this is from Eddie Gray at the Pipe Nook. I think I did a initial tin note with uh, Chrissy the Sultress at work. And this is Deception Pass. And she seemed to, to get some cherry and vanilla out of it. And I guess the untrained nose might smell aromatic, things like that. It's very sweet. I'm getting hay barn. Any, anyone who's ever worked on a farm, you know there's a hay barn. You walk in the hay barn and, and it's where the hay 
is being stored before it gets fed to the animals, so it's not outside. Hardcore hay and this says uh, Northwest style Virginia Perique fusion with a bit of Turkish Orientals. It's from Seattle Pipe Club. You get this from Eddie Gray at the Pipe Nook as well as the Saltinelli. It's actually a Savinelli Roma 673, which really is one of my favorite pipes in the whole world, honestly. If you don't have one of these, just start stashing away a couple dollars a week until you can save up and get one of these. Believe me, you won't be disappointed. Incredible, incredible pipe. I'm going to put all these links down below. Deception Pass. Really, really enjoy this. Uh, anything, anything that I've tried from Seattle Pipe Club is really different. They're complex. Very complex. But if you've had this, you know what I'm talking about. And what else? My favorite tobacco of all time is... I get this from... Uh, Pipes and Cigars. This is Daybreak, which reminds me of uh, Early Morning Pipe Match. My favorite tobacco of all time, right here. Right here. I just want to like pour this on myself and just like, just smell it. Mm. This is, it's got a slight smokiness. Sweet, just the sweetness pops out. Sweet and smoky. Think about like a barbecue sauce that's made with honey, a little bit of cayenne, like a rub. Honey, cayenne, put on the ribs, put on the grill, and what you're smelling while it's on the grill is this right here. It's, it's meaty, but this is my favorite blend of all time. When they stopped making early morning pipe match, which I liked better than early morning pipe, I was freaking. So I just went and started searching like AM tobaccos, morning tobaccos, and I found this and I said, this is it. I, I can rest now. It's my favorite. It's, for me, it's a daily. I really love it. Try it, you'll see. One of the best ways to try this, and this sounds like a big commercial for everything today. If you've ever wondered what a Briar cigar is, this is from Chris Morgan. It's a cigar made out of Briar. It's got a little cap, you take that cap off. I will load that up with my Daybreak. Put that in there, put the top on, and I'm ready for the day. I could take this with me, keep it in the glove compartment of the car, keep it in my pocket. It's not fragile at all. This little bit right here comes out. This Briar Cigar is a kind of a reverse calabash. There's a chamber that cools the smoke, so it doesn't go right from burning ember to mouth. So it cools it just a little bit, swirls it around and just loses some of that hot temperature. If you've ever ever wondered about a Briar cigar, pick one up. I think everyone needs to have one. I will load this up. Put it in my backpack, put it in the glove compartment, pop it in my pocket. When I'm ready to fire this up, this cap comes off, and I load it and I take a, um, a golf tee tamper, because the regular check tools that spoon or that uh, that tamper part doesn't really fit in here, but the golf tee does. You know, like the kind of golf tee that uh, the longer ones, like the kind that Scott from Aristocob has. And I stuff it in there. I will take and I'll just like drop it in there, tamp it with the pad of my finger, drop a little more and tamp it, and then just turn it and tap it, put the top on. When I fire it up, I'll fire it up just like a a regular cigar. I always keep it kind of like up. I'm not smoking like this because I don't want anything coming out and burning anything. So I always kind of keep it up a little bit like that. And it's got a little button on it, which is nice, which you can clench. It's so light, so don't feel like you're, you don't have to feel like you're really clamping or clenching on a, on a pipe. So this is a nice little thing that I think every 
pipe smoker should have. I think they even make them with a cob, like a cob cigar or something like that, right? Uh, some people get them and just put cherry tobaccos in them. I'll put a link for that. You can see that. It's a Briar Cigar by Chris Morgan. Can you see that? Cool little etched logo in there. All right, so those are some of my favorite tin notes. Oh, my other favorite is Brunello Flake. And I got this from Eddie Gray at the Pipe Nook. Just absolutely magnificent. We're going to wrap this up. This is Flake right here. Um, just beautiful. If you guys, if you're into like, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Can you see that? And that is just magnificent. I would say out of uh, all the flakes that I've ever tried, I think the Brunello flake, it's a Savinelli uh, blend. It's my favorite flake. Absolutely love it. You can't go wrong with it. Get that from Eddie Gray at the Pipe Nook. Well, it was a lot of rambling today, but at least uh, we got a chance to talk about some tin notes and maybe some tobaccos that you never tried before. Oh, and I'm going to put a link down below to everything. And then I'm going to put some words. If you, can, if you know of other words to use uh, to describe tobacco, put them in the comments down below. Make sure to bang the, th the thumbs up, the like button. Subscribe to the channel, please. And forward this to someone who you think would appreciate it. Let me just read off a couple words, a few words. Fruity, nutty, mossy, earthy, raisin bread, bale of hay, fresh cut grass, sour, mushroomy, figs, smoky, pine, stewed fruit, leather, sweet, rum, molasses, cherry, whiskey, coffee, cocoa, salty, smooth, fermented, vanilla, and cream. Those are words that I use to describe certain tobaccos. And a lot of times if somebody gives you the words to describe what you're smelling, it just makes for a more pleasant pipe smoking experience. If you know of any more, please put them down below. Thanks for watching. I always appreciate it when you take the time out of your day because there's so many choices out there that you have and you chose to spend a few minutes with me. Have a super day. Bye.